All right, welcome back to the Rush Hour Podcast, the 15-minute podcast where we talk about various Yu-Gi-Oh! topics. I'm here with Eric Shen, and yeah, this episode is going to be about going into nationals this week. Uh, it's it's the week of, and both me and Eric are feeling a little anxious about the whole thing. Like, I think we both have anxiety and just really nervous about it. I got asked like three minutes ago by Ludo, you know, who do I think is going to top the in the NAWCQ Ultimate Time Wizard Tournament? And I was like, well, honestly, like there's going to be a lot of good players, probably more than there ever has been in any in real life tournament. Like, I think this will be the highest density ever of good players in Edison. And we're all vying for one of these eight spots. It's only eight spots, which is actually insane. And he was like, oh, do you think like Eric will top or whatever? And I was like, man, like Eric is really, really good. And so are a lot of other people. It's going to really come down to like a bit of luck with the bracket, right? Like, you, you don't want to play against your worst matchups often if you have to at all. Uh, drawing cards at the right time, you know, just getting lucky. All oh, the winning die rolls will matter a lot. Like, of course, you need to play well too. But all the good players, we already we're known for doing that part already, right? Like, so when two good players play against each other, it's like, oh, what was it decided by? He opened dust shoot. He won a die roll. Stuff like he drew the dark armed. You know, he drew the burial return, the Caius, whatever. And that is starting to like add pressure to my mind. How is it doing to you? No, it's pretty much the same thing. Like. I'm trying to get an advantage here and there, you know, by changing like one or two cards and trying to, you know, make, you know, get an advantage in my deck. But really, those one or two cards are going to be so marginal, regardless of what I end up picking. And yeah, like you said, it's going to be really hard to outskill another really good player. Like that's probably not going to happen. It's more going to come down to, you know, look what you said, the luck factors. And there's also like this, I don't know if you have this, but there's like this pressure to like do well. Yes. And Nats, even though it's like any other Ultimate Time Wizard tournament. Right. So I was I was bringing this up to people, and we had this kind of a pre-production conversation about this, but Nationals for Edison players isn't any different than any other Ultimate Time Wizard tournament. So there's no real extra pressure. And what we mean by that is that if you're playing in a main event, right, at the NAWCQ, you have an invite to Worlds on the line. There's also just a bunch of extra prizing at Nationals for the main event, right? Like they get the prize card down to top 32, I think. There's the Worlds invites. They probably do extra stuff that I don't even know about that Konami just throws in like here, you get this because it's this big tournament. Whereas for us, it's literally just another Ultimate Times tournament, no different than the next one, which is Sacramento, no different than the next one after that, Anaheim or whatnot. Like they're all the same. There's really no difference between these so the pressure that we feel right now i think the added pressure of it being nationals is kind of just the nostalgia feeling of Yu-Gi-Oh nationals when we played the main event and it doesn't really it shouldn't really exist for us right now like i shouldn't feel like i'm pressured to do well at nationals because it's nationals when in reality it's just another ultimate time wizard tournament. now obviously there's pressure that comes with playing in an ultimate time wizard but it's not added like it's the same as indie it's the same as rally it's the same as every you know what i mean yeah but it does have the coveted you know this is nats there's yeah. a little more uh prestige the word? clout if you win yeah clout that's a better word yeah yeah it definitely does have the clout i've been in not a real debt crisis but i've been trying to figure out if i can figure out something new right and i'm wondering because i did i did find something that is spicy and i i think that it could give me an edge but i don't know if the list is ready and i don't and it's weird because i'm like oh i don't want to really risk my nationals on this deck list that i have that's spicy when in reality it's like again what's the difference between this and you playing that for sacramento or having played it for indy or anything else like it's the exact same thing really yeah and it's like how much of an edge is that really going to get you versus what you already know Yes, because I the, the spice that I have is a, a bit more complicated now, which is crazy because Hero Frogs, I think, is already a complicated deck. And I say that based on every time I watch someone else play it, I get a little depressed by how bad they play the deck. So like to me, like the Hero Frog build that I'm trying to increase the ceiling and make it even better is even more difficult to play than hero frogs already is like there is more there are more lines and more ridiculousness things uh and i always get nervous about that because i try not obviously i don't want to misplay uh, but i would hate to lose to myself because like oh i haven't played this deck enough to really iron out the kinks of technical play yet it's interesting that you're trying to bring some spice and let alone you I feel like everyone is trying to bring some spice because it's Nats, even yes. though, like we said, it's the same tournament as any other Ultimate Time Wizard. But Nats just always brings out the, what's the word I'm trying to look for? Like the hidden goo out of people, it I does, guess. People try does. to bring all their spice and try to get an edge. Yeah, people but, hold stuff for it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Even though this is totally the same like any other Ultimate. But the thing is, like, Edison's at a point, also at a very unique point, where there's an established like top three, top four-ish decks. Yep. And the question now is, 
are you going to try to play a top three, top four deck better than everyone else, or That's exactly are you going right. to try to, or are you going to try to get an edge and play this tier one point five, you know, hidden deck, whatever, try to get some good matchups into those top three, top four decks? Like, what's what's the play? How much of an edge are you actually going to get by going through those two paths? Like, I don't think anyone really knows. That's so true because now the the big three after Indy. We kind of established that you know edison has a big three right it, hero frogs won again now we have to put in the same category as blackwing and value these are the decks that win the most events a across the board they've won so many and i think at this point everyone is looking at them in the same way in the format we've all all of us have made content all the content creators in the format have made content talking about the big three now every single one of the major content creators has done it so there's a lot of ire aimed at specifically those three decks and not only is there going to be hate for those decks but there's also going to be this weird thing where you're mirror matching more often, I would think. Like, I expect to play more Hero Frog mirror matches now than I ever have. I actually haven't played against many mirror matches at all in Ultimate Times or tournaments in the past. Like, at Richmond, I don't think I played a single... I played against a Frog deck. It was a Junk Frog deck, and I just 2-0'd them and went about my day. So it's just all, of, all the Frog decks to me are inferior to Hero Frog. So it's like, I've played against other Frog decks. Not really Hero Frogs, though. And... At uh, Indy, I only played against one, and it was Dimitri, and he's like an Edison World Champion, and we we went to top four. He almost, you know, won the whole thing undefeated. Uh, but in terms of mirror matching, I only played against one, and I played against a lot of IU. You know, there's I played against multiple Blackwing and stuff like that, like the basic matchups. But I think that now I'll be playing more mirror matches theoretically, and that is annoying to me because I thought one of the strengths of my deck was that I don't mirror match often, and I I love that. Like I love not mirror. I don't like the mirrors. I I don't like the mirror of any deck. No like, one does, yeah. But you have to play but, so many value mirror matches, I feel like, right? Like, that's normal for you at this point, because value's been more popular than Hero Frogs for a while. Yeah, like, at, at Raleigh, I definitely played, like, four mirror matches, but I played no frogs. And in those mirror matches, I don't know. I don't understand how I won all of them, because it really is flip-floppy. <laughs> uh, You're just built well, through, bro. I, I don't know. I feel like it's... I feel like there's only so many lines you can take in the first two turns in the value mirror, so you just have to play that right, and you're yeah. good. That's how but, I feel about frogs, too. I practice solo mode for that very reason. I think that the opening, the first two turns, I think, are the most important turns for hero frogs, and you're telling me the same thing is true for value, which may lead me to believe that it's true for all decks, but like, I think that because our decks scale up as the game goes on in such a way that it really matters how you open and how you set yourself up to be in a better position for the next couple turns, as opposed to like when I think about a deck like, uh, I don't know, like Amaryllis to me is always trying to play the same exact way. You know, it's mm -hmm. trying to summon Titanio as soon as possible. And then everything else from there is just like spam this card until they lose. But it's not necessarily playing to like a Miracle Fusion-esque card. It's not playing to a Return or a Burial type of card. It's just kind of like, I always am trying to do this at all points of the game. Like at every point in the game, I'm trying to do the exact same thing. Whereas with Hero Frogs, there's a point where I want to Dupe Lock. There's a point where I want to Monarch you. There's a point where I want to Unifrog you. There's a point where I want to Miracle Fusion you. And there's a point where I want to Junk Synchro on you. There's all these, like, these are all different decisions that I can do pretty much all the time. Like, they're all, they're typically available to me throughout the game. And I have to choose which one I want to do when. And yeah, so it just, the opening is so important. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely going to decide a lot of games. But I feel like what's going to decide a lot of people's tournament run, just like how you and me, when we won our respective Ultimate Time Wizards, is going to be bracket luck. Yes. I didn't play a single frog at Raleigh. Yep. And I didn't my, play a single frog yeah. until the end of the tournament, basically. I played against what I think is a really good matchup for Hero Frogs value. Played against five of them out of 11 rounds. That's almost half of my rounds were just literally a matchup that I think is actually favorite for Hero Frogs. So, like, in, you know, not super favorite, but 55 45. And I don't know. I think that bracket luck, like, again, I don't want to play against Christius one every round and GBs and like Macrocosmos people who are just there to, to absolutely uh, crash into Kamikaze. They're Kamikaze yep. artists. Yep. You That's know? what I call it. Yep. Yeah. I was going to use a different word, but a lot I think of it's them. appropriate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's going to be a lot of those decks at Nats, though. Those decks always show up at Nats for some reason. People like have this like inner turmoil where like, oh, I got to play a different deck to like get an advantage over the meta, where really they're just picking a you know, a kamikaze deck, thinking yeah. they're getting advantage, but really you're just going to ruin someone's day and not top. Yeah, you're going to ruin one of the top players' day for sure, if not multiple, and that's all you're going to do. And honestly, you know, it's kind of funny because honestly, if, if that's what makes you happier, if you get all, like, if that's your goal, then I, who am I to tell you not to do that, right? Uh, our goal, me and Eric's goal, is to win. Like, we want to win this tournament. And so if I want to win this tournament, I'm not going to resort to a tier three deck to try to win like i released a tier list video very recently about my predictions and you know at the bottom of it it's like but why is one of the tiers and also yeah. the other one lower than that was okay stop and in those tiers you have decks like microcosmos and fall troll nonsense and 
like just a bunch of decks that are not very like six samurais gravekeepers like why like, why are you doing that like those decks are just not ready for edison i understand that they're more broken later like both of them gk six ams and stuff like that they're insane later but you're trying to force a triangle into a circle like in a kindergarten class you know the, the one little thing the circle to triangle to square it's like you're trying to force a triangle into a circle right now by trying to cram gks into edison format and make it actually like a tier one deck it's just not going to happen at least not that i believe with the carpool so yeah kamikaze and the thing with Edison is every deck's power level is so low compared to other formats and their decks are so inconsistent where those decks that you mentioned can 100% beat oh, any Yep. 100%. You can just, lose. I can get Royal Tribute and lose. Yep. You can just get Faltrell Catted and lose. Like, it's not hard. Yeah. Like, Cat is a 15% chance to open with an opening an opening hand. So, like, it could absolutely happen. So, we, we both have anxiety. That's kind of how this whole thing started. We have all these thoughts. Now... In terms of playtesting for this, you've actually been doing some testing. I know you and Marcus have been playing some games. You, you've gone over each other's houses and stuff like that. I can't say I've done the same. I've done more talking to top players just about the whole thing, like just talking about nationals. But in terms of playtesting, how's your playtesting felt? Garbage. <laughs> it's all garbage? I've been, get, I've been getting boffed, man. I like I, I've been trying to change. So I was actually thinking for a split second of changing decks to frog hero after our whole frog hero like podcast thing yeah and you winning and just like man this deck is just it really does feel like a unless i get sacked i can't really lose kind of deck yeah and then i tried it a little bit i'm like no i'm not getting sacked but people like black wings just pressure me and i'm like oh my god i can't really <laughs> do anything <laughs> so that just doesn't feel good which shouldn't matter to me but it kind of does yeah, no, it's not without its faults. I don't want people to think that Hero Frogs is some kind of like god of the format deck. I mean, it's it's top three, but it's not literally undisputed broken like that. Like it does have its issues for sure. And, and like you said, sometimes you get pressured in a way that's like, bro, this deck kind of sucks right now. Like literally. Yeah. That's that's what it felt like like to me more than I would have liked. Yeah. And then I tried going back to value and I tried changing some cards to you know, just adjust for the meta or just to see if, you know, these ratios or whatever are not better. Like, value's pretty much pretty solved right now. So there's not really much I can change. But, like, I was still just getting bopped. And I'm like, man, maybe there is, like, another deck I should be playing. I was playing uh, one of my good friends, Lucas, and I I convinced him. He's, I love Lucas, but no offense to him. He's not, like, there there yet. Yeah. There, but um, he was playing Jake XO's. I, I convinced him to play Jake's, Jake XO's zombie list because I'm in love with that list. And, man, my dude was bopping me. Just, just like, like destroying you with Diva Zombie deck? Like the Z yeah, Diva Hero Zombie? I, exactly. Unless I saw oppression to stop his play. It was too much. I'm, it's just too much. I even, like, I even, I, I did this thing even where I was just theoring in my head, like, oh, if I have Card Trooper against zombies, I should mill two. Like, I just thought that randomly. Cause, because, cause, like, you want to bounce off a of Pyramid Turtle. Yeah, I want to run over Goblin Zombie. I don't want to hit Pyramid Turtle. Like, I just thought of that, like, in my head. I'm like, oh my God, I'm insane for thinking that. Yeah, and it actually came smart. up. Yeah, yeah, right? I thought it was pretty smart. It actually came up, and it didn't matter. He just bossed me anyway. I'm like, dude, this Damn. matchup is really hard unless I have oppression. He just has so much gas. And that guy has been topping a lot with that deck, too. You bring up a good point. When I watched his replays, because he's currently playing in the same tournament that I'm in. I'm playing Black Wings right now in this tournament, and uh, it is it is my day. with you know Even though this tournament is a 48-hour tournament where every round is every two days, it is clearly my day with Black Wings in this tournament. I am opening fucking crazy... I've lost mm -hmm. one game in four rounds. Like, it has been not fit. Like, it, my last game I played, I double whirlwind. And so, in this tournament, I have been watching people's replays, people that I find interesting, people who have topped before, stuff like that. And I did see some of his, and it's just like you said, bro, They people just die to that zombie diva hero. It's scary. Like, it's very scary. It doesn't make sense, because it. I, we didn't mean to talk about this deck, but it just kind of has the best of both diva hero and zombie. So, I don't know, it's yeah. just really cool. Yeah, and it's it's kind of consistent because I think decks that play Stratos are just naturally like that. Like that yep. card, that monster weaves together engines. Like he's such a good middle monster to just like, oh, I'm bringing this engine, the hero engine always, and then whatever the other engine, like if it's water needed, which is what it usually is, he kind of brings them together in this magical way. The discard traps and all that with the, you know, malicious search and yeah, he's broken. And Gold Sark, Future Fusion is insane. Like all of these cards that are just bombs. I think that. Maybe that's what I, I've always realized this, but maybe that's becoming more and more clear to me as the, as the format goes on. Your deck just needs to be broken. Like, Value Turbo has been winning so much in the past because I think that I just play more broken cards than every other deck. Like, the, all the one-ofs that are just insane. And then 
you know, just to bring it back to like what I've done to Hero Frogs is like it's kind of the same thing in terms of uh just adding like future fusion and stuff like that and just making my deck do more ridiculous things. But I don't know. Yeah, I just want to like say this, like you said, this this term is kind of unique because the meta has been developed so much in the past year. There's a huge conglom conglomerate of highly skilled players. Like this will be by far the most. What I think is going to be the biggest tournament for Edison. Same. JC Edison. And two, there's going to be like pretty much everyone I know who is a decent player that's not in like Europe is coming to this tournament. Yeah. There's going to be so many people. You need so much bracket luck because there's going to be so many people trying to kamikaze. Like in the end, all you can really do that I, I've concluded at least, all you can really do is play your best and hope you get, you know, you just draw, draw well. Yeah, I agree. And uh, that's our time. So what do you guys think about this whole thing? Let us know. But this is what two of the top players are going through mentally right now as we head into this very important weekend, but really not necessarily more important than any other Ultimate Time Wizard tournament. Anyways, we'll catch you in the next one, guys. Peace.